Welcome to Global Wrestling News. With the college wrestling season around the corner, we have a bit of a break from international wrestling, but that doesn't mean the world champs are taking a break. USA Wrestling recently held an evaluation camp at the Olympic Training Center and caught up with world silver medalist James Green and under-23 world team member Sammy Brooks. Let's check in at the OTC. From an outsider's perspective, you might seem kind of like a quiet leader. Yeah. How would you define your role on this team? Um... Really, I, I just try and show up. Just a little things like being showing up on time, uh, paying attention to details, asking questions. You know, Bill asked me to be warm up one day. Um, obviously, I'm learning to be more vocal, but for me, I'm still trying to learn myself, and uh, I'm trying to get the best out of these training camps. So as I sit back and I'm a little quiet, I'm just observing and you know trying to better myself. So. Maybe not on the like the technical side, but as an athlete, how have you seen yourself grow over these last couple of years and through these last two world championships? Uh, not eating McDonald's, <laughs> <laughs> not staying out late, and you know, just really trying to be healthy, live a, live a healthy lifestyle. Um, just the things I do in my off time, whether it's sleeping. I mean, not sleeping, but you know, I'm not going to sleep in all day and just eat junk food. But you know, trying to be active and. Uh, like I said, not staying out, not eating pizza all the time, buckets of ice cream. Really, just trying to be more healthy, make my weight cut and my training and make myself feel better. And that's really, I think, as any athlete gets older and they grow, you know, you, you leave the household and you have to be on your own. You're cooking your own meals and you're trying to be healthy and live healthy. Because you want to do this as long as you can. And the only way you're going to do that is by outside of the room, take care of yourself. Uh, so recently I've been even getting into yoga and just trying to be more flexible and let my, my body relax and heal up and take the time because sometimes wrestling is real hard-headed. We get injuries and we're just like, it's fine. We're going to wrestle through it. So, you know, being able to have that talk with my coach, like, hey, I need some time. I'm going to just relax. I'm going to just let my body heal up. Stuff like that, communication, it's really big. You're coming off a world team trials win at U23s a couple weeks ago. Um, what were some key things that you picked up from that tournament? Um, so, well, there's, you know, things I did well, excuse me, there's things I did well and uh, things I could work on, you know, uh, those last two finals matches, I, I gave up too many scores, even though I was able to keep the pressure on and uh, keep wrestling, even though, you know, I didn't necessarily wrestle the, sm the most solid, stingy match. Um, but I was able to keep things happening and keep flurries going that eventually led to, you know, the, my opponent wearing out. And so I was able to put up my scores, but sort of tightening things up, especially these, uh, these guys from other countries, they're good and they can score points in bunches. Uh, so making sure I'm not getting down early or putting myself in a hole, making things closer than they have to be. With that fresh on your mind, those things, and you come out here with the national team, what are you taking advantage of the most this week? Um, just everybody's different perspectives. You know, you've got guys from all over the country with a hundred different styles, and, and uh, so picking some of these guys' brains on, on the way they do things and how they feel when I'm getting into certain positions with them, uh, it's, you know, it's great. It's, it's something you don't get to feel often. You kind of get in your own little bubble in your own room, and while there's great, you know, knowledge, I'm not saying that there's not an unbelievable amount of knowledge, sometimes a fresh set of eyes is, is a great thing for seeing what, you know, maybe noticing something I can improve on. Takeaways, Tony, from the James Green interview? I think the biggest thing is that, you know, he's staying at 70 kilograms, his focus really has switched to his health. And that's uh, something that I think that we really miss a lot in the sport. Right. We're seeing it more and more, though, with our elite athletes. I don't know who's getting in their head. Maybe USA Wrestling is, but it is, you know, it's interesting to see you know, this world several medalist has, has had problems with his diet, and now is re refocusing it 
and concentrating on his body. I like the yoga talk, Tony. For me, that's important. You think how much funky wrestling we have now, the more flexible wrestlers have the best defense, something we should look to in the future for our sport. So Sammy Brooks makes the U23 world team. Thoughts on him not only making the team, but what about his future in the sport? Well, I think the the biggest thing that Sammy has needed is that one-on-one -on -one time, you know, being a part of a college team, you're there for your teammates. Now it's really the focus is all on him. He can only he, he can only control what he can control now focus. too. So he's not, you know, he's not the leader or anything like that. He doesn't need to be. So I think also his, you know, making this world team is huge for him confidence-wise. Now he gets to go out and train at the OTC. He gets other coaches to to feel him and, and see how he wrestles and maybe they might not have Tom Terry Mark's eye that they have in that Hawkeye wrestling club so the more hands they can get on him and help him improve I think will will be great for Sammy Brooks. I think you're spot on. All right we got to take a quick time out. South Dakota State head coach Chris Bono joins the program next. You're watching GWN thanks to Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottle. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting and you should too. The South Dakota State Jackrabbits are creeping and creeping into the national rankings and moving into recruiting territories they haven't been before. The head man, Chris Bono, was recently on Takedown Radio to discuss the program and the upcoming season. Let's take a listen into the highlights. You know, Chris, one of the other things that, that I think you have that, that the community really appreciates is the schedule that you put out. Obviously, wrestling a Big 12 schedule now, but beyond just the Big 12 the, the big meet, dual meet with Minnesota coming up here in the middle of uh, November, and, and then out at Arizona State, and then Central Michigan. So, just three really tough schools you're going to wrestle here in the in in the early season. Um, really help us to understand exactly where South Dakota State's at. Yeah, we're that's um that's something our fans love it. Our fans want to see good wrestling. They're very knowledgeable. You got to remember back in the D two days, South Dakota State was a powerhouse. Um, and we see a lot of these same fans that want that success, and they know they're wrestling. So, you know, when we're bringing in teams that we can beat 50 to nothing, that's that's not fun to them, you know. And so now that we've got we, we've got a little bit of credibility, we're we're a ranked team. It's easier to get some of these better teams to come in uh, and wrestle our ranked guys, and our fans just absolutely love it. So, um, you know, and then and then and then selfishly, we want to make sure we're wrestling the best teams to get our guys to the NCAA tournament and making sure they're prepared to be All-Americans and national champs. So it works both ways. We're not looking to pad our schedule um, for results. We're looking to get our guys ready and, and have an entertaining product out there for our fans so we can sell season tickets and, and uh, create a great atmosphere, not only in our, um, at the university, but the whole town. Mm. After, a dual meet, after a dual meet, downtown is just lit up with our fans, and, and, and everybody appreciates that. So it's, it's a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful thing that we can get some of these better teams in for sure. Is Gross still wrestling 33, and I know that things are going to be fluent. Can you give us kind of an overview of what your lineup may look like this year? Yeah, good good question. Yeah, Gross is at 33. Um, he's already certified. He's, he's, I think he's, he's already been down, you know, within a half pound after a tough practice. So that's not an issue for Seth. Um, our lineup is still very undecided, to tell you the truth. We're not sure what we're doing at 25, 49, 65. 84 and heavyweight so i i could tell you i could give you a bunch of lies right now so i'm not really going to do that but um 
Our leaders, you know, 97 will be Nate Roeder. 74 will be David Kocher. 57 will be Luke Zilberberg, who's coming down from 65. Um, 41 right now looks like Henry Pullmeyer. He was our starter last year. He's like done, that guy. He had a great, yeah, from Johnston, Iowa. He had a great summer, a great preseason, uh, and he's improved a ton. And then at 33 is going to be Seth Gross. So um, those are our horses. Those are our leaders. And, and then we just got to figure out the rest of them uh, here in the next, you know, couple of weeks. So, so Chris, without singling anybody out, because I know they all have a shot at this thing, but who, who should we be looking for? Who are some of the younger guys or the newer guys' names that we ought to be thinking about? Okay. Okay, well, at 25, we got both the Portillo brothers out of Clarion, Iowa, um, who are scrapping with each other. And, you know, they're, uh, they're twins. Clarion, Clarion, Clarion a guy Goldfield. Named Connor, yep, yeah. Clarion Goldfield. We got a guy named Connor Brown out of Missouri who's a true freshman that's uh, really, really turning heads in our wrestling room. That, um, and then we've got a kid named Riley Molitor who's a true freshman out of Sartell, Minnesota, um, who's doing wonderful things for us, too. So we don't know what's going to happen um, there. And then we've got the option of Kalen Morris, who's a South Dakota kid. Who um, you know I'd like to redshirt. He's, he's in his third year and hasn't taken a redshirt year yet. Uh, so we, we 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 don't know what's going on there. Forty nine. Uh, we've got a kid named um, Colton Carlson out out of Minnesota, as well as Michael Prado, four time state champ out of Kansas. That are, they're, they're they're battling it out, and I don't know what's going to happen there. Eighty four is our most interesting one. We've got a fifth year senior in Brady Ayers who's been around, placed in Midland. I think he was at the Big Twelves a couple years ago. That redshirted last year, and then Martin Mueller, who's a sophomore, that was a starter last year, that was third to Big 12s as well. So we got a lot of depth there, and those guys are battling it out. And then in heavyweight, I would tell you Alex Mack, he's our leader um, uh, in, in the clubhouse from Ballard, Iowa. But we've also got Kevin Bull, uh, a highly ranked freshman, 300-pounder, uh, that, that committed to Boise that we wound up getting when Boise discontinued the program, who's pushing him. I don't know what's going to happen at those ways. Now, Tony, you couldn't be on the show, but – you took a listen to the interview. What are your overall thoughts on South Dakota State? Well, I think knowing that Gross is going to stay at 133 is really important to him. You know, being able to get back to the finals and South Dakota State, they've got a few holes there. Um, Rotor and Gross obviously are going to be the leaders on the, on this team. Here, my boy Paul Meyer will be on the it possibly in the lineup, so that makes me happy to to see his hard work paying off too. You once you once described Henry Pohlmeyer as a dangerous man. Why? Uh, he's mean. He, he's just mean. He's got heavy hands. He, he's not afraid to use his head and his, and his shots and getting in there. So um, I always thought that he could be a great college wrestler, find the right weight class, I think was is really what his struggle has been. And it sounds like Chris Bono's got a spot for him this year. Right. So you've, you've got what we call old man strength. He's a young man, but he's rough, dude. I mean, you uh, mentioned that after a practice, you felt it. Yeah, this was in high school. So I, I, I mean, I wouldn't even probably strap him up against Henry Pullmeyer right now. But, yeah, this guy, um, he, he was, out of all the high school kids, I remember him as, you know, maybe a guy that can maybe you know, make my cauliflower or poof up a little bit. So he, he was mean. He was mean. Still is mean. Edinburgh's head man Tim Flynn joins us after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sports. Stay tuned. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these 
throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. WrestleOps are happening on college campuses around the country, and it's no different at Edinburgh. Tim Flynn's Fighting Scots are looking to set their lineup. Joining the show is the head coach, Tim Flynn. So talk to us about uh, the, the team and the makeup of the team because everybody's always interested in advance. Are you guys pretty well set, or is have you had your inner squad meet? No, that's coming up this weekend, uh, a week from uh, today. Okay. Um, we, we have a, a young team and, you know, an interesting team. We have, you know, a handful of guys ranked probably 10 to 15 or somewhere in that range. So, you know, if we can get them to take a step and then we've got some newcomers. So, you know, we're going to, I guess we'll find out here in the first month or two of the season, how good we are. You know, one thing, and you mentioned it, it really helps us having, you know, someone that's, uh, you know, as accomplished as Cliff, but. More importantly, someone that works as hard as Cliff, you know, and then we, you know, we took on Mitchell Port, one of our own, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. So we, you know, I feel like I have two assistants that really embody what we're looking for in a student athlete. Um, you know, I'm real fortunate to keep them here at Edinburgh. So. All right. So who goes for you, your estimation anywhere, coach, uh, at 174? 74. We have a returner, a national qualifier, Ty Showstall. So. You know, we expect big things from him. He had some really tight bouts with uh, some good kids and, you know, just trying to get him over the hump and starting to beat those guys instead of, you know, losing tight one-pointers. But, you know, he's really good, and we expect a big year from him. He's out of Pottsville, I think, right? Pottsville, PA? Yeah, down in down near Central, South Central. Tim, uh, who's the sparkling for you at 25? Uh, Sean Russell. He, he's uh, returning All-American. He was seventh last year. Um, he's beaten a lot of good kids, and, you know, he's just a really good wrestler and a great way to start off duels. Right. So, you know, we're looking for a big year. It's a really tough weight class, but, uh, you know, I think he'll be ready. And at 49, do we have a – is there an odds-on guy there? Or do you, I think you have a, a redshirt freshman out of Old Saybrook, Connecticut uh, in there yeah, as well. Yeah, we've got a couple guys there. You know, so far in the room, you know, this uh, freshman, Peter Pappas from uh, – New York has really, uh, you know, been doing well. Um, you know, so I, I feel like he, he probably could step in and, and do a good job. So that may be our starter. Jake Oliver at 174 is doing a really good job for us. Uh, wrestles really hard, so we like him a lot. But, you know, we have a senior that waits, so we'll probably redshirt Jake. Um, but we have, a, you know, all of our freshmen are really working, you know, really hard and, and getting into the system and, um, we're real happy with, you know, all of our young guys. How is Sam Ziff looking for you right now? I mean, this, this is a kid that, uh, boy, you don't want to blink. Yeah, Sam, Sam's doing a good job. You know, he's in his fifth year. He's, he's struggled, you know, at times, uh, just putting it all together. But boy, last semester, uh, you know, not on the mat in the classroom, he kicked butt and, um, just a great kid to have on the team. Uh, so, and we got a lot of those. So, you know, we're real fortunate. Coach, overall record last year, 9-6, and six, EWL record, perfect on the year. Uh, I don't know how you can improve in the EWL, but how do you improve overall in the national uh, the national hunt? Well, we just, we, you know, like I said earlier, we, we have a group of kids. Uh, you know, we mentioned Showstall at 74. Um, Corbin Myers at 133, I think, is ranked somewhere between 10 and 20. And same with our heavyweight. Um We've got to get some of those kids, Austin Matthews at 65. we got to get some of those 10 to 20 guys, you know, in the top five or six in the country. So if they can make a step or a jump, you know, we'll have a good team and have a good showing at the NCAAs. 
Coach, there's been some game-changing rules. What are your thoughts on the, the new NCAA rules that are being proposed and one that will be in place this uh, coming season? You know, I don't know about game changers. You know, I'm a big believer. You change the rules. They did it. They do it in freestyle all the time, and the same, you know, guys show up and do well. And, um, you know, the kids will make adjustments to their scrambling for this, you know, neutral danger zone and takedown. Uh, you know, I, I don't overreact. You know, years and years ago, I thought the worst thing in the world was the one hour way in, and now I think it's one of the best things we ever did. So I just try to roll with the punches. All yeah. right, Tony, Tony, biggest takeaway? Yeah, my, my biggest takeaway here is actually his his thoughts, not not about the team, but I thought about the, the perspective rule changes kind of at the end of the interview. You know, this is, um, this is something that everybody has, like, I guess – in their mind, they're like, "Oh, it's gonna, it's not, it's gonna fail. This is not what it's gonna be." But at, at Tim's like, you know, the the best guys are always rise to the top, no matter what the rules changes are. So, I mean, there are gonna be some people that probably just aren't gonna be used to the rules. At the end of the day, you know, a year goes by and we look back, and we're like, "That was actually a pretty good rule change." So, I'm with Tim Flynn, and it makes sense that we just have to, you know, adapt them. Apparently, somebody knows smart, you know, smarter than us when these rule changes come into play. So. I mean, everything that they have done, typically, you know, 90% of the things we do like. All right, speak for yourself. All the rules changes I've implemented have worked. Yeah. All right, folks, do me a favor. Stick around. Quick Hits is up next. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to GWN. Three-time world champ Adeline Gray has been hired as an assistant coach for the new women's program at Wyoming Seminary. She took the 2017 season off to recover from injury, but will now resume her international career in addition to serving on the seminary staff. Gray's scheduled to compete on October 29th at the annual Beat the Streets benefit in Los Angeles. We haven't heard a word from Adeline since the Olympics. What the effects will have on that experience is really up in the air, Tony. Yeah, this is uh, an opportunity for her to move forward past you know, the Olympics. I'm excited to see her back on the mat. We talked, you know, we talked to Steiner. You know, he's been dealing with that injury, but it sounds like you know mentally she's she's all there. But there's going to be some rust to dust off. She's going to have you know I think some uh, second thoughts, maybe uh, some shots that she's used to going to. But I mean this. You know, Adeline Gray really dominated the international level. She didn't get the Olympic gold that she was wanting, but she has been dominating on the world level for a long time. It's time for her to get back there. All right, Princeton's Matthew Kolodzik will make his 149-pound debut against Northern Iowa's Max Thompson. The former high school rivals will square off November 5th as part of the 52nd annual NWCA All-Star Classic. Tony, I put you on the spot all the time. Who you got? Uh, Everyone knows I watched the show. That I'm a huge fan of Kolodzik. Talked about him at nauseam last year, I think, on this show. But uh, now he's up a weight class. Mm -hmm. uh, he's up a weight class. He disappointed me at the NCAA championships. I'm picking Max Thompson here. He's won on the big stage before. You know, didn't pick a national title last year, but I think 
the wins that he did get at the NCAA championships give me the confidence that this is the type of match that he wins, and it's really going to you know start the season off right for him and the Panthers. All right, two-time state champ Mason Paris has committed to the University of Michigan. He's ranked eighth overall in the class of 2018, won 106 consecutive bouts on his way to two state titles. McFarland now has a trio of top 20 commits. Tony, Joey Silva, Will Luan, and Mason Paris at heavyweight. Man, that's a murderer's row. Yeah, the Wolverines are, are here to stay. Yeah, this is just a uh, this is amazing, right? I mean, this is something that uh, I, I wrote off the you know Michigan Wolverines. When you're in the Big Ten, it's so difficult if you're clear at the bottom to just you know to get kids to commit because you've got Penn State on top. Iowa has done you know, has been successful, so it, it's just pretty amazing to see coach come and, and get some big guys like Luan and and Paris. These are huge recruits. I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pile on here just for a second. I think Michigan is taking advantage of how well Penn State, Iowa, Ohio State have recruited because they have openings in their lineup. I would much rather go to Michigan and start than sit on the bench for two or three years somewhere else. If I'm a coach, if I'm sitting in a recruiting meeting, I'm using those, you know, over they're over recruiting kids at specific weight class. I mean, Penn State has ungodly amount of talent at the lower weights. 125, 133 is stacked right now. I mean, Suriano leaving does help those guys a little bit, but if I'm a coach, I'm saying, hey, there's nobody here at 125, 133, or whatever weight class it is, you can be the guy in two years. Red shirt, and then boom, you're you're in there. So that, that is a huge selling point if I'm a kid. All right, we're out of time, Tony. Thanks to all of you for joining us this week. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and The Balance here at the Takedown Studios, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next time right here on Global Wrestling News. <laughs>